they must do is to spare. Belshazzar, Belshazzar was such a young man. Spoiled, rotten. So he called the party. Hello? What did he do? Called a party. And he called his generals. His leaders. Call everybody to come and eat with him. And they set up the place. And he remembered to call some extra ladies. Hello, somebody? Mm -hmm. Young men and young women are like the sheep on the sea. I like a snake on the rocks. An eagle in the sky. You can't trust the way they walk. He invited some concubines. Huh? <laughs> Filled up the room with big people. And then lots of Ladies who were not owned by anybody. Some free home. With slightly too much flesh to show in the upper and in the lower. The issues of the back cleavage and the front cleavage are not starting with you. So now that there's a field of the palace. With cleavages that had sprinklers on them and glittering stuff. Hello, somebody. The food is a drug. Especially when it is eaten without prayer. They started to eat. They were, you know, some of us, when we eat, we sleep. Because we actually get drunk. Did you know that? When you are full, how can there is some amount of intoxication. <laughs> and on top of the food, <laughs> then the Bible says, <laughs> they put wine. You didn't hear me? <laughs> you didn't hear me? <laughs> now, if you want a president of a country <laughs> to act like a fool, <laughs> here is the most concocted, concocted toxic Liquor. Please, if you want to confuse your president, this is how you confuse him. Give him food first. Lots of food. When he is full, then give him wine. When he is drunk, then just make young girls walk in class. Now, not even a sober man can stand. A church elder who mixes those things will forget who he is. There are very few people who can mix that concoction and remain sober. You didn't hear me, church? That's why Proverbs 20 says, Why is he a mocker? Liquor is a brawler. Whoever is led astray with them, he is not wise. And the king started to drink in front of his concubine. You, the young man, powerful, full of food, full of liquor. And in his eyes, cleavages. <laughs> then he wanted to be more powerful. <laughs> then he started asking, We have done everything. <laughs> Is there something else we have not done? <laughs> because he wanted to show off to the girls. <laughs> He said, we have sinned, we have sinned, we have done all. Then his mind went to the temple. We have not done this before. Bring those utensils. All they were enjoying themselves. God visited their party. I said this to the young people the other day. That God loves parties. Hello? 
He comes to the parties what are the party just to check who, who is there. Is there. <laughs> You didn't hear me, Jeff? Yes? No, no, it's this nice one. I can give them that. When there's a big party, yeah, a big house, people come God, this is the party. Oh, just just know, to mark the register. I think I'll try to register. And see who is there. After I share, give my auntie. So on this party, party name. There were four people missing. Who don't have a trauma in the bus? Daniel, Daniel, Shadrach, Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego. Abednego. Yes, the rest were there. Boy, shit, man, man, today. And number two. God comes to find out if people are playing with holy things. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And God visits the party just to double check if hands are holding holy things. Oh, someone is not with me today. So whatever happens in the party, there is a divine hand that misses no detail who sees everything that is happening so God visited the party to make sure that everything was happening well and then after he looked the Bible says he started writing right on top of the wall wait, wait wait, wait, wait. Counted, counted. Found wanting. Your kingdom has been taken away from you and given to the means and the patient. Did you read the Bible nicely? The Bible says when God started to write, the Babylonians believed. That a king was like God. So when that happened, everyone went back. And the God was supposed to go front and address this issue. But he was the most responsible and the most powerful in the room. Read the Bible. The Bible is polite. It says, his loins. <coughs> Gave way. <laughs> now that, that's polite language. <laughs> In the King James Version. <laughs> the Bible says his loins <laughs> gave way. It simply means <laughs> wherever he was standing, <laughs> it became a toilet. <laughs> You see, you can be arrogant for all I care. But when God finally visits you, and He wants business done, very few of us can stand in the midst of controversy. When God wants answers, Belshazzar became a bathroom. And when he was right there, he started speaking like he was powerful. Can someone hear? Tell me what is written here. And I will make him the third in the kingdom. By the third. Because his father was still alive. He was the second. He was not willing to give this person to become the second. But the person will be the third. But his father was in holy. So I will make him the third in the kingdom. But no one could be found. To give him the answer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Grandmother, grandmother. I want one day when I come back, I want to preach on this woman. The grandmother, who is actually the wife of Nebuchadnezzar. Someone is not with me. The grandmother walked into the room. And she said to Belshazzar, Remember Daniel's name. Was also Belshazzar. That he was named by Nebuchadnezzar. Because he was hoping that his grandson, when he grows up, he will be his wife as the Hebrew Belshazzar. The Queen Mother walked in and he said to the young man, You have been arrogant. Just like your grandfather was arrogant. But don't worry. There is a man. Oh man, there's a sermon right there. Don't worry. There is a man. When you are married, 
married and your husband walks away. Also, you're hey, right. Jesus. Now, come on. Muna ute. When a business partner messes you up. Muna hey, Jesus. When the bank manager says he cannot help you. Hey, Jesus. When men cannot be found, there is a man in whom there is the spirit of God. The power to discern and interpret dreams and visions. Daniel is his name. And Daniel is called upon. And he walks into the room. And he says, as he looks on the wall, he can tell his father had been here. Okay. He could tell his father had been here. Even if he was not invited, but God had invited himself into the function. And he had left evidence of the wall. And Daniel started to tell him, the King, you've been too mischievous, too arrogant, too stubborn, and God has weighed you, has counted you, and you've been found. You are putting on a mini skirt. You have exposed too much. Too much arrogance. Too much mischief. Too much wickedness. You have shown off. And when God looks, God looks, He's not impressed at all. Take notes. While they were celebrating, that night, the middle patients blocked the river that was flowing into the city and they diverted it that night and they crawled under the bridge into the city and Daniel is interpreting the dream interpreting the writing on the wall the armies were coming into the city that very night when Daniel finished his plan Belshazzar picked up his chain of royalty and he put it on Daniel. <laughs> that very night as he is dressed up nicely the king also picked up his robe and he put it on Daniel. As he is dressing him up, the soldiers, he is dressed up like a king. He has a golden chain on him. And when the soldiers walked into the room, the ancient tradition says, don't kill the king. Daniel, Daniel, like the king, everybody in the house was destroyed. When the middle patient arrived, Daniel, they asked him, What is your name? And he said, My name is Belshazzar. Oh, someone is not with me. What's your name? And he says, My name is. Belshazzar. And the army general had heard that the king of Babylon is Belshazzar. And that night, when everybody was destroyed, Daniel was spared. The mercy of God. And the whole time, you don't need to be out of trouble in the midst of your trouble. God can work a miracle. That's why David said, The Lord is my shepherd. I he lets me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. Even if I walk through the valley of death, I fear no evil. Oh, you are with me. Thy rod and thy staff. You prepare a table for me. In the presence of my enemies. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. 
I don't even know whether it's the first time uh, for the, I mean, the, the, the minister to be with us. To be among Seventh day Adventists. <laughs> so he's here, we are really honored, and then we think. <laughs> So I don't want to waste time, I'm time conscious. Then I will just call upon you, my minister, to come and say your word. Are your people. <laughs> and I am disturbed by the uh, translation. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask students at the National University of Lesotho to raise their hands so I can see, just have a rough idea. Oh, quite a sizable number. Yeah. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters, in Christ, if I were asked if there's any place on earth I'd rather be at this point in time, than here, I would say, this is the place. I have I've had a wonderful time. I've enjoyed the trumpet playing. I've loved the keyboard playing. The vocal singing. The preaching. And I have learned about Rupertas. <laughs> and, and, and this is quite a mouthful. I have to apologize that I, I have to go back to the uh, CRFM 10th anniversary ceremony and celebration. But before I do that, I would like to say a few words to you. Mainly to confirm the message from the uh, preaching. For those of you from NUL who perhaps do physics, or maybe chemistry, or biology, I would like especially to address my words to you. I have a habit of reading, just reading myself to sleep with mathematics and physics books. 
And um, the atheists, the scientifically inclined, 